स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Okay, so let's solve some more problems. So problem one. What are the conjugacy classes in D4? Recall that D4 is the dihedral group with eight elements. It's the group of automorphisms of the square graph with four vertices. So I'm drawing the square graph here. Which has four vertices. One, two, three, four. And D4 has, we've seen, uh, four rotations including the identity and four reflections about various axes. Many ways to solve this problem. I'd suggest that you pause your video and try to work it out yourself and then come and see how I solve it. Okay, so to understand the conjugacy class in D4, let's firstly understand that uh, uh, these are all really permutations. So D4 is a subgroup of S4. And uh, the way we've described this group, all the elements of D4 are permutations. And now, suppose we have that um, G x G inverse is equal to x prime for G and x in D4. So that means that x is conjugate to x prime in D4. But then that also means that uh, G is in S4 just because D4 is in S4 so that means that X and X prime which happen to be in D4 are also conjugate in S4 so X and X prime are conjugate in S4 which means that they have the same cycle type. Okay, we've seen that two elements are conjugate see, conjugate in S4 if and only if they have the same cycle type. Now the other way, the converse may not be true that if two elements are conjugate in S4, then they are conjugate in D4 because just because you can find G in S4 such that Gx G inverse is equal to X prime, it doesn't mean that you can find G in D4 such that Gx G inverse is X prime. But this is enough to get us some crude idea of what the conjugacy classes would be like. So uh, let's just try to write down the cycle types of the eight elements in D4. And it turns out that those cycle types can be easily read off by the geometry of what's happening uh, in, uh, in the dihedral group when we express it as the automorphisms of the square graph. So um, let me uh, make a table here where I will write down the different types of elements and I'll write down their cycle types. So the first kind of element that we have is uh, obviously the identity element. Okay, and uh, what is its cycle type? Its cycle type is 1, 1, 1, 1. It has 4, 1 cycles. Okay, and then what do we have? We have uh, rotation by plus or minus 90 degrees. So one of these takes 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 1, and the other takes 1 to 4, 4 to 3, 3 to 2, and 2 to 1. Both these have cycle type 4. Okay, and then we have rotation by 180 degrees, plus or minus, doesn't matter. So that takes 1 to 3 and 2 to 4. So this has cycle type 2, 2. And then we have uh, two kinds of reflections. Uh, we have reflections about uh, axes that pass through edges. 
okay so we have reflections i'll call these uh, about green axis so uh, let's take the reflection about the vertical axis for example so that takes one to two and two back to one three to four and four back to three so its cycle type is also two comma two and then we have reflection uh, about the vertical axis which takes one to four and four to one two to three the horizontal axis and three to two so that's also two two so there are two elements of this kind so we we'll, let's also keep track of the number of elements of this kind so here there's one identity element there's two rotations one by plus 90 degrees one by minus 90 degrees there's one here these reflections there are two so we've got three six we have to find two more elements and uh, these are going to be actually reflections about these diagonal axes which pass through um, the vertices reflections about purple axis and what is the cycle type here let's look at this axis that passes through one and three that reflection fixes one and it fixes three and it changes two and four so it's um, two one one is a cycle type and there are two such elements okay so certainly um, elements with different cycle types cannot be in different conjugacy classes and now all we have to find out is whether elements of the same cycle type are in the same conjugacy class or not so um, of course uh, this is a conjugacy class by itself um, now rotation by uh, 180 degrees is of cycle type 2 2 um, so we don't know it could be in the same conjugacy class as reflections about green axes or not okay and uh, rotation by plus or minus 90 degrees well uh, they, they are the only uh, four cycles so either these two elements are in the same conjugacy class or they are in different conjugacy classes but let's look at this rotation uh, one goes to two in the, i'll write down the cycle rotation two goes to three three goes to four and then we have another rotation which is uh, one goes to four four goes to three well maybe i'll write it in the same order two three whoops one four three two so to conjugate this which i'll call r and this which i'll call r inverse we need to find a permutation which takes somehow the l vertices of this cycle to the vertices of this cycle so we take w to be uh, 1 goes to 1 2 goes to 4 um, 3 goes to 3 and 4 goes to 2 then we'll have um, yeah so 2 goes to 4 so that's w and so if we take r inverse w let's take w r w inverse then uh, w inverse takes uh, so what this w does is it basically interchanges um, two and four so um, so w r w inverse of two will be yeah this will be r inverse as we have seen in uh, our discussion of conjugacy classes in sn so these two elements also form a single conjugacy class okay let's see what we can do about reflections about green axes we'll come to will come to rotation by 180 degrees later so what can we do about reflection about green axis so um, 
right so there are two of them and i'll write down their cycle uh, decomposition so there's um, one two two one three four four three uh, this uh, I'll call it maybe um, X and the other one is 1 3 uh, sorry 1 4 and 2 3 let's call this X prime and now we can write w by just taking 1 to 1, 2 to 4, uh, 3 to 2, and 4 to 3. Okay, but uh, what is that element? Um, no, that element is not in the dihedral group. So let's try a little trick here. Let's let's try this cycle in the other way down round three, two. Yeah. So now we'll have uh, one goes to one, two goes to four, three goes to three, and four goes to two. And then indeed we have uh, W is just uh, it fixes uh, one and three and it interchanges two and four so it's a reflection about one of the purple axes and we'll have w x w inverse equals x prime so indeed these two elements are in the same conjugacy class and then let's look at reflection about purple axes so then we have Two fixed points so the first element uh, th about the axis 1 3 it will have two fixed points 1 and 3 and it will have one two cycle namely 2 goes to 4 and the other one is um, has fixed points 2 and 4 And it has a, so let's call this x and x prime interchanges 1 and 3. So we can write w as um, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 4, and 4 goes to 3. Now this element is. Uh, is a reflection about a green axis reflection about the verti uh, vertical axis and we have w x w inverse is equal to x prime so these definitely form a conjugacy class so so the elements are uh, the identity element is in a conjugacy class by itself the two rotations by 90 degrees are in a conjugacy class by themselves uh, and these reflections about purple axes are in a conjugacy class by themselves and the only thing we don't know is whether rotation by 180 degrees is in the same conjugacy class as a reflection about the green axis. So let's see what we can do about that. So let's draw the cycle type here for rotation by 180 degrees. So, so we'll call that uh, R squared and it has cycle type 1 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 1 and it has 2 goes to 4 and 4 goes to 2 and the other element let's take one of the reflections about uh, green axis let's say 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1 3 goes to 4 and 4 goes to 3 Okay, we'll call this element x. And we want to know whether r squared is conjugate to x or not. So now, if you have a permutation w, which conjugates them, then it must take the cycles of r squared to the cycles of x. So if it takes 
uh, one if w of one is equal to one then we must have that w of three is equal to two and uh, but then you see w of one uh, one is adjacent to uh, is not adjacent to three but one is adjacent to two so no element of d4 can do this so this is not possible in d4 okay but maybe you know w takes uh, one to two if it takes one to two but it must still take three to one and uh, one and three are not adjacent to each other but um, so if w1 is equal to two then w3 must be equal to one okay but one and three are not adjacent to each other but two and one are adjacent to each other so again w cannot lie in d4 and similarly you can check that if w takes one to three or w takes one to four there is no element uh, w and um, you know w r squared w inverse is equal to x then uh, w cannot lie in d4 so what we have is that this is a conjugacy class all by itself and this is a conjugacy class all by itself so let me just summarize this so the conjugacy classes in d4 there are um, one two three four five of them so they are basically uh, identity uh, rotation by plus or minus 90 degrees so this class has size 1 this class has size 2 there's rotation by 180 degrees this class has size 1 there's a reflection about an axis through an edge so these are the green axes there are two of these and there is reflection about an axis through vertices and there are two of these as well now this may not have been the fastest way to do this computation but i'd like to do it like this because it was kind of conceptual it actually tells you uh, what the different types of elements in D4 are and why they are in different conjugacy classes. Problem 2. What are the subgroups of D4? Now, there are many ways to do this problem as well. So, I'll let you um, pause your video and try it see how many subgroups you can find and then come back and see if you found them all okay so here's the solution now firstly note that the order of a subgroup of a group divides the order of the group this is because the group is a disjoint union of cosets of the subgroup and each coset of the subgroup has the same size as the subgroup itself so now d4 is a group of order 8 which means that its subgroups can be of order 2, order 4, or order 8. And of course, there's a trivial subgroup of order 1. So basically, we need to figure out what are the subgroups of order 2 and the subgroups of order 4. Now, a subgroup of order 2 would just consist of the identity and one more element. And that element better be an element of order 2. That means it's an element x such that x into x is the identity. Now, we've already played with the dihedral group of order 8 enough to know what these elements of order 2 are. Uh, let me just remind you. So, this dihedral group of order 8, we have um, Let's just 
just have another one here okay so we have now uh, reflections about vertical and horizontal axis so we have a uh, reflection about this axis and this axis we also have reflections about diagonal axis so if we use the notation from earlier oops, this didn't come out so well yeah i've used the notation from earlier where we had um, s is equal to 1 uh, 4 uh, 3 2 and r is equal to 2 3 4 1 so this s is a uh, reflection about one of these orange axes passing through 1 and 3 so it just interchanges um, 2 and 4 and r is rotation by 90 degrees then in terms of these elements um, s and s r squared are the reflections about these axes so the reflection about this axis is s and the reflection of this axis is s r squared and uh, these two are the uh, reflections r s and s r okay so so there are four of these uh, reflections in the dihedral group and there's another element of order two r squared also has order 2. So the subgroups of order 2 in the dihedral group so it's a subgroup consisting of one of these five elements and the identity. I'll use the notation angular bracket. So what this means is that this is the smallest subgroup that contains the element r squared. So this angular brackets r2 is the subgroup which contains the identity element and r squared similarly we have the subgroup r s we have the subgroup generated by s r we have the subgroup generated by s and we have the subgroup generated by s r squared these are the five subgroups of order two what about subgroups of order four So the subgroups of order 4, uh, well we know that a group of order 4 is either uh, cyclic of uh, order 4 that means it is just generated by one element of order 4 or it is um, z mod 2 cross z mod 2 and so it is going to be generated by two elements of order 2 which commute with each other. And so uh, the only element of order 4 in D4 is the element R. So the subgroup of order 4 is r that is isomorphic to z mod 4z and then there are uh, if you look at these elements r s and s r well they commute r s into s r is r squared as is uh, s r into r s. So they generate a subgroup of order 4 and then s and s r squared they commute s into s r squared is r squared which is also s r squared into s. So the smallest subgroup containing these things. So just uh, to be clear, this subgroup R consists of four elements: E R R squared R cubed. Uh, the subgroup um, R S S R consists of four elements: identity, R S S R, and R squared. And uh, finally, the subgroup S, S R squared consists of four elements, identity, S, S R squared and R squared. Okay, and then there is the obvious subgroup of order 1 which is just singleton identity and the subgroup of order 8 which is all of D4. We can uh, organize these subgroups in a somewhat appealing manner uh, showing how they are related to each other. So, at the bottom of this pile we have the trivial subgroup consisting only of the identity element and then we have uh, well we have the subgroup generated by r squared and then we have well the subgroup generated by s the subgroup generated by r squared s the subgroup generated by r s and the subgroup generated by s r those are the four reflections okay and they all contain the trivial group now come the subgroups of order 4. So there is a subgroup R 
uh, generated by R of order 4. Um, so, it consider identity R, R squared, R cubed. That contains the subgroup generated by R squared. Then there is a subgroup R squared S generated by R squared S and S. So, it contains R squared S, it contains S, but it also contains R squared. And then there is a subgroup generated by S, R and R, S. And that contains, also contains R squared, it contains S, R and R, S. And then we have uh, D4, the whole group. So, this picture gives you a uh, bird's eye view of all the subgroups of D4. Problem 3. Which subgroups of D4 are normal? Okay, so we just worked out what all the subgroups are and I'll uh, let you pause your video and try to figure out which of those subgroups are normal and which ones are not. Okay, so to see which are normal and which are not, we need to combine our understanding of conjugacy classes and subgroups. So remember, what are the conjugacy classes in D4? So the conjugacy classes are, there's the class of the identity, there's the class of R squared, there's the class of uh, R and R inverse, and then there's the class of RS and SR, and then finally there's the class of S and R squared S. So these are one, two, three, four, five conjugacy classes. And a subgroup is normal if and only if it is a union of conjugacy classes. So um, obviously the trivial group is normal, right? So let's just put a green highlight on the normal group. So this one is normal. Uh, R squared is conjugate to itself and this group consists only of the identity in R squared. So it's a union of two conjugacy classes. So this one is normal. D4 is obviously normal. Uh, the subgroup generated by R consists of identity R, R squared, R cubed, which is R inverse. Uh, so this one is also normal. It's a union of conjugacy classes. Um, now, what about this R squared S? Well, this group subgroup contains R squared S, but it doesn't contain S. So this group and this group are conjugate to each other. They are not normal. So let's use a different color here. So these are not normal. And similarly, RS and SR are conjugate, so these subgroups are not normal. On the other hand, if you look at the subgroup R squared S comma S, it is a union of conjugacy classes. So this one is normal and this one is normal. Okay, so that's the solution. Uh, there are uh, four subgroups of D4 which are not normal and the remaining uh, one, two, three, four, five, six subgroups are normal. Problem four. Which subgroups of the quaternion group are normal? This quaternion group was a group that we met in the solved problem session of last week. So this was a group which had the elements uh, plus or minus e, plus or minus i, plus or minus j, plus or minus k, where uh, i, j, and k, and e were certain two by two matrices. And uh, we had worked out uh, the conjugacy classes. To be singleton e, singleton minus e, plus or minus i, plus or minus j, and plus or minus k. We had also worked out the subgroups. There were um, three subgroups of order 4. Uh, they were generated by each of the elements i, j, and k. So the subgroup generated by i consists of identity, 
i uh, minus e minus no it consists of identity uh, that is e i minus i and minus e this consists of e j uh, minus e and minus j this consists of e k minus e and minus k and all these subgroups contain the subgroup uh, consisting of plus or minus e so i would call it the subgroup generated by minus e this is a subgroup of order 2 and then there's a subgroup e of order 1 so from this information you should be able to see uh, which subgroups of q are normal so pause your video and try to see which subgroups of q are normal okay let's see if you got those right so this of obviously a normal subgroup right it's just a single conjugacy class this is a union of two conjugacy classes the conjugacy class singleton e and singleton minus e this subgroup the subgroup generated by i consists of right as i said it consists of e i minus e minus i so this is also normal because it contains all all this this element is a class by itself this element is a class by itself and these two form another class so it's a union of conjugacy classes so this is also normal similarly this this hey and of course this is normal so this is an amazing fact uh, the quaternion group is an example of a non abelian group all of whose subgroups are normal this is not a very common thing so Here's another nice special feature of the quaternion group. Mm -hmm.